How's it guys and welcome to another episode of ASFM. Thank you guys so much for liking and subscribing to our videos. We really, really appreciate all the support we're getting from you guys. Yeah, it is a lockdown period, so we can't actually do much again. And it's been extended, so yeah, our hopes of fishing early is not going to happen anytime soon. But it's good. There's more bonding time for the family as well. So it's beneficial to us. So don't think of it in a negative way. It's always positive, uh, positive thoughts that's going to come out of this year. So yeah, be strong, stay safe, and uh, you know, just stay indoors. Today's a hot topic. A lot of guys have been watching on social media. They've been chatting about uh, ultimate reef saver traces and best bronze beam trace, best uh, muscle cracker trace and stuff. So I had quite a few guys on social media actually inbox me and tell me, you know what, uh, we've been losing a lot of sinkers, we've been getting stuck a lot and losing a lot of fish on the reefs as well. What's your preferred uh, trace? So I said, okay, fine, you know what, let me actually make a video for you guys to show you what I actually use. Um, reason why I've been through it. I've lost a lot of sinkers before while fishing on the reefs and stuff, and it's annoying. Especially if you take a handful of sinkers, like 10 sinkers, and you bring 5 k's down to your best fishing spot, and you lose all your sinkers, and your day is ruined. It, it ends early because you lost all your sinkers. So today's trace that I'm going to show you guys is my ultimate reef saver trace. And it's going to be beneficial to you guys, so I encourage you guys to try it. And if you guys do, well, I know you, get, you guys are definitely going to have success on it. You're really going to like this trace. So when you do catch a fish on it, make sure you send your catches to grandelite at asfm.co.za. Right. I'm going to show you guys what you need for the trace. And I'll be showing you the trace uh, before I actually start the rig. So first thing you can need, is either you can either use fluorocarbon or kingfisher lead line. I'm actually using Kingfish at the moment because my fluorocarbon is all finished from the traces that I've been making over the lockdown. Number three, power swivel. Must add ring soils. This is the 4O. And yeah, now let me tell you guys something. I use the ring soils because this trace that I'm using I actually fish for both bronze beam and brusher. The 4O ring soil is big enough to hook up a, a bronze beam and it's it's not too big. Most of the guys go small for bronze beam and stuff. Personal preference. I've seen guys hook bronze beam on bigger hooks than this here. If you don't believe me, ask Andre himself. He hook keys on a, on a 5O hoodlum down on our 120 show that we did quite a while back and he was trying for, for muscle crack and hooked a nice size bronze beam. So the beam that we actually going to be targeting, especially on the baits, I'm going to be doing a bait demo as well on this year. Uh, the baits are going to help you guys catch your 2 kilo upper bronze beam. So yeah, this is a very strong hook. I enjoy it a lot. Don't get me wrong, I love the, the white gate carp hooks, demon circle uh, and, and tuna hooks. I love it. But for this application, number four, four mustard ring soy hooks. Your anti tangle uh, sleeves, as well as your beads as well. Your NT number five swivels. Alright, that's the smallest in the range. I'm using a 15 mil float. You guys don't have to use a float, but uh, I use a float because I'm targeting both brusher as well as bronze beam. And then just a, a toothpick to stop your float. So basically, guys, this is the trace here, all right? And uh, as you can see, your power swivel is on the top. There's your main line coming down. Your empty swivel is here. It's free running. Now the reason why I leave it free, I'll show you guys now. And it's a, you can you can adjust the length of how you want it. Some guys like it longer. Uh, because then remember one thing with this running free and with this float and the current and stuff this bait can go up high and come back down to the bottom so depending where the bronze beam is feeding it's going to reach that level and uh, i've got a bead here then i've got a stopper at the bottom all the way down is my sinker now take note of this here i'm using the same diameter of line that i'm using as my hooks, hooks nut the reason why i'm doing that is because I'm not going to be losing any sinkers. And let me show you guys something. This is the trace, and this is my, I don't just think, uh, thin sinker, sinker line. When a fish comes and pulls on this hook here, as it pulls down, your sinker comes up. You guys can see that. 
So there's no way you're going to be losing sinkers because your fish is going to be pulling up here into the water column and your sinker is lifting with it. And there's your the main line here which you can put a lot of pressure on to pull that fish. So there's no way. And even if this thing swings, it's because of the empty and stuff, it's going to swing and swing and swing. It's not going to tangle whatsoever. So you're not going to have a kink in your line. You're not going to lose the sinker. If you're worried about your knot, don't be concerned at all. The sinker knot is cushioned enough. There's your stopper that you made, all right, with a figure of eight normal nylon, and there's your bead. So when your empty swivel comes back, it's going to, it's going to be pushing pressure on the bead, and the bead's going to be putting pressure onto that stopper that you made. And because it's the form of figure of eight, it acts like a spring. And if you guys can see that, let me just get a bit closer. There, yeah, acts like a spring. So it's not going to affect the knot on your sinker at all, all right? So when you're done, after landing a fish, you're going to readjust adjust your trace. All you do is you pull your stopper back up, and that's your trace back again. If you're not too happy with your stopper, if you find it a bit too loose, you can already put another stopper on. So that's my ultimate reef trace. Now let me show you guys how you make this. All right, guys. Um, Let's start, start off with the setting quickly. Like I said before, basically what you guys need must add 4 o ring soy hook, number 3 power swivel, the NT number 5 swivel, your anti tangle sleeves as well as a bead, your weight, your float, as well as a toothpick, just to stop it there. And obviously your float of carbon. Now, you can choose the diameter you want, I'll normally go 5.5 five or 0.6 on, on the specific trace. But you can go lighter, can go heavier, it's up to you. This is what I prefer. So, yeah, let's start off with the ring quickly. So the first thing you're going to do is start off with your hook. So you're going to make your, your hook line first. So you take your hook. You're going to be doing a standard figure of it. Which is basically you feed the line through the eye of the hook, then you take it once, twice, three times over. Feeding back through and you pull tight. That's a figure of eight there. Remember, always lubricate all your knots. For demonstration purposes, I'm not going to be lubricating it but remember please lubricate your knots put it down pull it tight once that's nice and tight cut off your tag end okay I normally go about 25 to 30 centimeters long on my hook snoop some guys go a bit longer on it but that's what I like, so I'm going to go about 30 centimeters long. You then take your float, feed the float down. Now you're going to be attaching your hook snoot to your NT swivel, the number five. The part that, where the eye sticks out of the swivel is what you're going to be using because remember. This section here of the NT is going to be running up and down your line. Oh, sorry guys, actually for one more thing. You can be putting your anti-tangle sleeve in first. Carefully feed it through. Then you take your anti-swivel. Again, figure of it. Give it one, two, three. There, pull it nice and tight down. Ah, perfect. Cut off the tag end. Take your anti anti tangled sleeve. All the way up to the knot, and you pull it really tight. 
to get over that bump. As you can see, it's over. Right. Right. And what you're gonna do then is take your float, position it how far you want it away from your bait. I want mine right there. So then what I do is I take my toothpick, push my toothpick in as much as I want it, and break it off. Toothpick came out there, let's push it in again. Perfect. So that's going to stop my float from moving up and down my line. It's going to keep my float there. So that's your hook snoot done. Now you can be doing your main line, which is where your sinker goes. For the sinker part, I actually like to make my trace between 600 to 700 long. So you take a sinker. Big of eight. One, two, three. Pull it back. Pull it through. All the way down. It's nice and tight. Cut off the tag again. Cut the length that you like. Then I take my bead. Feed my bead in first. Then my hook snap. You feed that through the anti swivel. Then you take your number three power swivel. And again, figure of it. No fancy knots, it's all thick of eight. It's a very, very strong knot. You're not gonna have any issue there. One, two, Always, always lubricate knots. I'm only not lubricating the knot because of a bit of the demonstration purposes, but please always remember to lubricate your knots. Yeah, so that's it there. Now, what you're going to need to do is your stopper. So, how do you make your stopper? Take a piece of line and make a standard figure of eight again. So it's one, two, three. Put it back through. Form the figure of eight. Put it there, pull it tight. Now, you're not going to pull it too tight where it's not going to go back down. You're going to pull it just enough so you can move. And you'll play with it and feel the tension. That's perfect. Cut your tag ends off. Both sides. Position where you want your stopper to go. How far you want it hanging, the hook hanging from the sinker. So that's basically it. And that's your trace. Remember, when the fish comes and he takes you on this hook, he's going to pull your sinker all the way back. Guys, that's my ultimate leaf trace that I use when I'm fishing into structures where there's a lot of scattered rock and there's heavy ledges where I need to pull the fish up and I'm going to be afraid of my sinker catching the reef. In this way, I know my sinker's not going to catch a reef because my fish is going to be on and I'm going to come all the way out. Right. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and please do try this trace and don't forget, send your catches to grindelite at esfn.co.za and what you get in this race.